being live. Hey y'all, I am James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are doing, um, well we're going to have a little bit of fun and make some uh, half blind dovetails. Um, okay, I had to do that. <laughs> yes, um, and I thought, I, I know I've done half, half blind dovetails on live once before a long time ago and I thought I had some to show what they look like, um, but I don't actually. Um, most of the time I do through dovetails for most of my joinery, um, so I don't have a demonstration to show ahead of time, which is kind of cool. Well, let's make one up so I'll have for the future. Um, but yes, last week we did the houndstooth dovetails, um, which are basically doing dovetails twice at one time. Um, half blind dovetails kind of look tricky and there are a few things about them to, to make them a little easier. Um, and so I want to actually kind of go through that and dispel some of the fears that come from them because they are relatively simple once you understand the basics. Um, items coming up. I don't think we have anything right now. Uh, we're just getting uh, things coming up for the season. Um, all of the puzzles are sold, so I'm sorry for anyone who, does, who still wants those. Um, you have to wait another two years. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> so uh, let's actually just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to be making it today with uh, two pieces of wood. This is um, uh, white oak. Um, actually, this is like 100 and something year old white oak um, scrap piece that I had from a project I was working on today. And then this is uh, Filipino mahogany, or uh, I can't remember what it's actually called. Um, but it's a fairly soft wood. And this is a fairly dense wood, but they give a nice contrast between the two. So basically, what is a half blind dovetail? Um, it's kind of like, let me grab this one. It's kind of like a standard dovetail, except for you can only see it from one side or the other. The other side has a solid blank piece of wood, so you don't see it coming through. So you're making a dovetail, but only with half of the board. So half the board is perfectly faced, and the other half is missing behind it. Um, and the idea behind it is, uh, it used to be dovetails were Ew, yuck. Um, they were something you tried to hide nope. because they were really an ugly looking joint. Um, and most woodworkers tried to um, make the joinery disappear. Um, Japanese especially were really, really good at making joinery just disappear um, and, and put things together in a way that they didn't need as much glue well, um, because the Japanese glue wasn't quite as strong. You know why? What? Because they're ninja woodworkers. <laughs> Actually, there's a, uh, there's a channel called The Samurai Woodworker. Um, what was I getting into? Oh, yeah. So dovetails were something that people tried to hide. And so the easy way to do that is if you're making a drawer front and you have this board here and you don't want to see the dovetail on the front, you only make it half line. So that the front of this just looks like a solid board. If you look at it from the side, you can see the dovetail, um, but the front looks um, fairly standard. And that's the way drawers were done for a long, long time, hundreds of years. Um, and either that or they would have a full um, through dovetail and they would put another piece of wood on the face to then hide it. Um, and so the nice thing about that is looking at the drawer from the front, you don't see the joinery. Um, I personally like to flip them around and actually show off the joinery, um, but eh, different things for different people. Um, yeah. The, uh, then the next step is a half blind. You can see it from one side and not the other. Whereas a full blind, I'll probably be doing that sometime in the future, is actually something where you can't see it from either side. The joint is completely hidden inside. Um, and then you can take it even farther and go to a mitered full blind joint. Um, and those get really fun. <laughs> uh, there's, a, yeah, there's, a, there's a few ways of making them that are very interesting. So today we're going to be making the, uh, the standard half blind. Now normally what we're going to do is grab our marking gauge and we are going to find what is the thickness of our piece. And we're going to put our marking gauge down here, lock that down, and then mark it onto our other piece so we know exactly how thick is the board that's going into it. In this case, I'm going to use this white oak as the drawer front, and this is my secondary wood. Uh, so at the front of this, you won't see anything, you won't see the dovetails coming through. We're going to have this joint into that. So rather than measuring the full thickness of this board and transferring that over onto this, we need to figure out how much do we want sticking out. And usually you want an eighth inch to a quarter inch sticking out of there. And I'm going to go uh, something around an eighth inch or so. And I'm just going to put this on, leaving it about an eighth inch away from that board. Let me kind of zoom in like this. Look at that. And I'm going to put this on here yeah, somewhere around there. It really doesn't matter exactly where it is. Um, there is no 
best place for that to be. Some people like to have a little thicker stock there, making it stronger. Some people like to have a little bit smaller stock, making it more delicate. But I'm going to put it on here. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and on this end, I'm going to mark all the way along here. And that is going to be my stop cut coming in this way. Then I'm going to take the same mark, and I'm going to come over here to my tail board, and I'm going to put that on here, and I'm going to go all the way around the board. And we're going to mark on that. Let me back this up a little bit. So we're going to mark on here and all the way around. If anyone has any questions, throw those in the chat. And Sarah will throw something at me and get my attention. So there we have our tails board ready. And our pins board, uh, we're going to be putting more marks on that in a little bit. So we're going to set the pins board aside and just stick with the tails. Now for the first half of this, now that we have that mark on there, Everything we do on this is going to feel very, very similar. It is the exact same as what you're going to do on any dovetail joint. Um, I'm going to put this in here, sticking up about three, four inches or so. And let me get this camera in place so you can see it a little closer. Any questions so far? Um, sure, let's see. Alex Adams asks, when resawing or ripping a board, at what thickness does it make sense to change from a ripping panel slash hand saw to a frame saw? <laughs> um, depends on how good your two saws are, how close your teeth are. Uh, for me, I'll take the hand saw up to somewhere around four, maybe six inches thick. I kind of like that. It's just, it's quick and easy. Uh, the frame saw is a little bit more, takes a little more setup time. Uh, so usually somewhere around four to six. If it's over six, I'm definitely using it. If it's four, eh, it depends on how hard the wood is. If the wood is hard, I'm probably going to use the frame saw. If it's a little softer, I'm probably going to use the hand saw. Um, so that's where I kind of draw the line, but everyone's a little different. Um, I need to put that on a shirt. Everyone's a little different. <laughs> I'm and little, you're different. What's that? I'm little, you're different. <laughs> <laughs> so let's grab out the dividers here. And I want to lay out where I want my tails to be. So I'm going to put one of them right on the edge of the board. And then I'll move out the other one to be a little bit past halfway. And we're going to see what that looks like. And then I'm going to flip it around the other one, and that's sticking off too much. So I don't want it to be quite, excuse me, I want it to be a little bit shy of halfway, not past halfway. So I'm going to try putting it here. Step that off. And it's still not quite enough. I need to just back it up just a little bit. I want to make sure that I leave a little bit of space over here for that last pin, half pin. So put a point, walk it over. Got about an eighth inch there. That's about what I want. So I got those two points. Now I'm going to move this over to this edge of the board. I'm going to put that on there, walk it over. And so I have two tails laid out here with about an eighth inch gap in the middle and an eighth inch on either side. Let me see if I can get you a slightly better view of what exactly I'm doing here. Down here, hey, look at that. And then the chances of you actually seeing those marks are almost impossible. So let's grab a square and a marking knife. I'm going to put that marking knife into that dot I drew, put the square up against it, and go light, medium, hard. Nice line there. Find the right dot on this one. Light medium, hard, next dot, light, medium, hard. And for some reason when cutting out the tails, I usually don't mark them because I don't have a problem with cutting on the wrong side here. And if you do cut on the wrong side of a tail, oh well, you're still cutting the tails, you haven't cut the pins yet. Um, so I generally don't mark them. And I also don't mark off the angle that I would have on the, uh, on the dovetail itself because uh, I prefer to eyeball those. I like doing that. I'm on the camera. I'm on the camera. So I'm going to set this on here. And I'm just going to do one pass right across. Nice square. Like that. Come over to this one. And I just want to have an establishing cut on here. Something that holds the saw in place. Now that I have that on there, I'm going to put it into this kerf. I'm going to take my saw and I'm going to lean it to the angle that I think is about right. And because these tails are fairly short, I'm going to make it a little bit more aggressive, something like a, what, a 1 to 6, maybe a 1 to 5. Nothing special. Move from this line, skip a line, hold that same angle I just had. Then put it into the one we skipped, 
Turn it over about the same angle. The thing I like about freehanding it is, yeah, these aren't going to be exactly perfect, but it gives a little bit of a human touch to them. Okay, down to marks on those. So now we can take this, flip it over, and we're going to cut down this shoulder so that we can get a nice clean line here. Now, before we go on, we're going to come back and clean that up. Ooh, I need to sharpen that. So we're actually going to sharpen this pretty quickly. Any questions while I'm doing that? Um, yes, hang on. It was just, I was asking them if it looked a little laggy because it was looking laggy on my preview screen. But anyways, um, Kenny and Janet Horn asked, I know you don't use a kerfing plane when resawing, but is, is it a good set of training wheels? Um, it can be. The, the one problem with a kerfing plane is it won't stop it from jumping the gap. You can still go out past the kerf. Um, it is not a foolproof way of, um, of making that stop. Um, so you can't trust it entirely, which I guess that makes it a good um, training wheels because it will still teach you to, to run well. Um, so if you're having a problem with following a line, then the kerfing saw may be useful. If you aren't having problem following the line, but the inside of your board goes curved, um, that's usually because either your frame saw isn't tight enough, you need to crank it down a little more, or number two, more common, you're actually pushing too hard on the frame saw or on your panel saw. And you will be on your line on your side, on your line on the other side, but it curves out in the middle. And a curving plane won't fix that. So back to this. Now we have this sharp. I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to clean out that corner. Love a good sharp chisel here. Mm -hmm. There and there. Then we can flip it. Do the same thing on the other side. I made... I don't know how many dovetails I did today. We're working on a couple different boxes. And uh, had all sorts of fun. I like not shooting video and just making things. Just enjoying the curls and the shop. That's the fun part of this whole thing. Turn on some good music and have a little bit of fun with it. So, we've cut out there and there, we need to do the little bit in the middle. And for that, I'm going to grab a hold fast and lock it down into the bench. And where did my big mallet go? I thought I had it out. It's not on my bench. Ah, it? it's over here. <laughs> That's a new one. I've never done that before. Here, I'll show you what I just did. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, do it again, do it do again. Do it again, do it again. So, um, the bridge of this is a little lower. My finger was on the bench and bent over. Well, I didn't realize it that the height from my fingertip to the top of my second knuckle is the same height as this. So when it hit this, it also hit my knuckle over here and jabbed my tip down into the uh, bench top. That's actually rather painful. <laughs> ah, life is fun. Life is fun. What would I do without life? <laughs> so, let's get back to the, the actual work here. Yeah, I've never done that, uh, that particular stupidity before. I'll have to add that to the list. There's always more things you can do to damage yourself. <laughs> so I'm going to put this in. I'm not going to go right into the knife line. I'm going to move it a little ways away from the knife line. Save that knife line as long as you can. I'm going to tap down just a little bit, nothing major. I'm going to come back. Move out. Go down a little deeper. And then pair it back in again. And I'm saving this corner out here, as that will still support the wood when I flip it over. 
I'm down to almost halfway. I'm going to do one more carve in here. And now I'm going to go right into that line. So it's pretty close to it. Pretty close. Get that right on. Keep the chisel vertical. And tap it down. The next little bit right over here. There. That's all we need on that one. So we can pull this out. Not bash the finger again. <laughs> My father used to say, yeah, here's the problem. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> um, a wise person learns from other people's mistakes. A normal person learns from their own mistakes. And a fool never learns. If you can't be wise, at least be normal. So, stay away from that line, chop in, then come in, pair out. Chop in. I'm not going to bust through yet. And then come back and pair out. Then we're going to chop in one more time. This one I should Which blow through. Which camera do you think you're on? The big one. Okay, just making sure. Yep. I showed the, the fine detail last time. I wanted to show my body mechanics it was in this just, one. Oh, okay, it was just the way you were standing. I was... No, I always try to show a close-up and then a back so you can see how I'm hunched over and getting things ready. It's one of the reasons why some people like having a joinery bench, raising things up a little higher so you can see it. Into that knife line. Over to this one. And then pop off the whole thing. Just pull out that little bit of whatnot in here. And the tip of my finger is really hurting. I banged it up good. Is your nail black? No, it's actually the. I have that. That's an old bl uh, blister from earlier, but it's right on the tip of the flesh right there, right on the, the very tip of the... It's merely a flesh wound. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to need a small triangular file to help me get into that place. I just want to clean it out, get rid, of any, get rid of any of the fuzzies. And there. We have a set of tails ready to go into our pin board. And this is where things get slightly different, but... Um, to be honest, they're all basically about the same. Um, any questions on moving this over? Uh, yes, and then we're going to like open a can of worms oh, topic Alan in a second. Knows. Thank you. Okay, what do we got? Well, Alan just super chatted, so there was no question to my knowledge that was attached. Do you have a question there too? Um, but if Alan has a question, I will ask it. I don't see it at this point. So what are we doing then? Okay, hang on one second. I'm hanging. Just bumped my nail while I was painting it. Um, let's For those see. of you who don't know, Sarah always does her nails during the live. And uh, be glad you can't smell it. You can't, don't even. <laughs> you can't, don't even. That's about the way my life goes. <laughs> Anyways, Dennis Miko wanted to know, do we know who invented dovetails? Oh, no. Um... No, um, yeah, they've been uh, around since woodworking. Um, there's dovetail joinery in, in Egyptian um, woodworking. It's it, it, it is basically the the original joint. I mean, you have got the mortise and tenon, yes, but then the next step from that is let's make the outside fatter than the inside so that they don't want to pull back out. Um, and so, yeah, they've been around for just about as long as woodworking has. All right. Are you ready for a mom joke? Yeah, what do we got? How do you fix a broken jack-o'-lantern? Hmm. You use a pumpkin patch. Uh, <laughs> pumpkin patch, yes. <laughs> okay, let's, let's hop back over to this. Alan has a question. Uh, well, fine, what's that? Oh, sorry, I was just reading the chat. <laughs> We were going to get to eventually, but since we paused, Alan wants to know, do you know if the peach tree meet is going on next year? 
Um, I have been told it is. I have not seen any um, definite on it yet. Um, I'm hoping to make it to that one, but I also have something else that might be happening around that time, so I'm not 100% sure if I can. Um, but as of right now, I believe it is. I just haven't heard the final yes, it is. Um, so we'll see. Should, though. Be better. <laughs> okay, so what we've got here is I've got the, the pin board in here. I have it set up to the same height as my block plane is. What that allows me to do is put this on here, and I know that this is now level in 90 degrees of the surface. I put my knife into that line we drew earlier, put this right up onto there, and then I'm going to flip my square over and use the bridge of it to make sure that the board is tied up to that side. If I just moved it a little bit more than I wanted to. There we go. Make sure we're still in that line. Yeah, we're still in that line. And so then very carefully, I'm going to keep my pressure here, and I'm going to mark light, medium, hard, light, You medium, talked about pressure, hard. and the first thing that popped in my brain was the song Surface, Surface Pressure. pressure. <laughs> yeah, of all the things in the dovetail, this is the most important step here. If you can get an exact line transfer here, you can actually get a good joint. If you can't get exact lines here, you won't get a good joint. And before we move on any farther, Mark, put the little X here, and the little X here, and the little X here, and the little X here. So we need to remove those. The next thing we also still need is the depth mark on this. And that one's just going to be like the normal R. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to mark it down to, whoop. All right. That's when you're to a point to answer yep. questions. Oh, it's all about marking gauges right now that they're asking. I'll put so, that on there and just mark down okay. depth on the pin board. What we got? Um, so that's more how do you decide when you want to use the marking gauge with the wheel versus a pin? Um, and what do you do when the wheel starts spinning on its own? <laughs> Um, if the wheel's spinning, I go the other direction. So one direction will loosen it, and one direction will tighten it. Um, and so I'm always, if this is on top of the board, I'm pulling it towards me, that tightens it, and the wheel stays put. Um, you generally do not want it to turn, because it is a knife blade that is slicing the wood. Um, if it's turning, then it's just compressing the wood. It's not slicing it quite as easily. Um, for cross grain work, I tend to find I'm using the wheel gauge far more. For with the grain work, I like using a pin. Um, I find the pin doesn't follow the grain quite as much, whereas a knife sticks into it and will follow the grain. Um, and so I have less issue with that. Um, and so these are my, the two most common ones I use um, is uh, my, my st simple Stanley pin and my dual, dual mortise and gauge uh, from Veritas. Uh, that being said, I have been using the, the four beam um, that Reed Plains did, and I have anytime I'm doing a whole bunch of marks, I love this thing because there's a lot of times I'll have four and five marking gauges out on the bench, and I can have one marking gauge that's set up with all of the marks on it, and that makes it very, very easy. So I do grab that one quite a bit. Those are my th the three that I use more, most often. Um, but yeah, generally with the grain, pin, across the grain, the wheel, or a knife. Um, yeah. So, Back to the joint. So what we've got marked on here is we have the stop cut on the top, we have our tails lined out on the top, we have our stop cut on the bottom. I do like to draw the vertical line on this one. So I'm going to put my knife where that stop cut is, slide the square up against it, and then mark down that way. Do the same thing on all four of these. This is more or less a virtual re reference because the square to the face, the end face, is the most important part of this whole thing. If these are square, you'll have a nice tight fit. If there's any angle to them, you won't. And you can't see it because my knuckles are in the way. I was just about to say. <laughs> there. Now, here's the big question. How do we cut out these blurry angles? Um, and so we've got our marks across the end, our marks here. How do we cut that when we can't go all the way through the board? And the thing is we basically go corner to corner from here to here. 
And on a lot of old boards, you'll actually see the saw mark coming farther down here and going even farther up this side here. Um, and so they'll go past their lines a little ways that allows them to get a little deeper. Um, and so I sometimes do that on the back face, but I try not to do it on the top, otherwise I'll run into um, issues of going out too far. I'm gonna grab a dovetail saw. And normally I like to start on the back side, but in this time I can't, I have to come back over here. But it's basically the exact same thing, I just have to lower my hand a little earlier. And I'm gonna go until I made a cut all the way across the top here, and then I'm gonna start lowering my hand and coming back this way. Except I need to raise it up a little bit higher, otherwise my saw is gonna run into the vise. Raise you up. Raise me up. There's my little Josh Groban for you. I'm going very, very slowly and very, very lightly, taking all the pressure off the saw. And there, I've cut from that corner to that corner. I'm going to do the same thing on this one and the next one and the next one, and the one after that. Vice handle getting in the way. So if you didn't have a vice, I didn't have a vice. How would you set that up? Um, I could put the board on the bench or the table, and then put a clamp all the way across the table and go clamp vice. Um, it's amazing what you can do with a set of clamps in the tabletop. Um, vice is better, but uh, not by much. It's just faster. The most important thing is how sturdy is your bench or your table that you're clamping to. I'm taking my time on this. I'm blowing a lot of dust. I want to make sure I get a really nice clean cut on here. Okay, now we've cut diagonal, but we haven't cut all the way back in. And this is the one part where people are like, wow, how do I do that? And so I'm going to do it two different ways. Each of these two pins I'm going to do in a slightly different method. One of them I'm going to grab my thin, nope, not that one. Where are you? No. Where are you? You, hi, hey, there we go. Um, I've got a very thin um, card scraper here. And the trick is you want a card scraper that is the same thickness as your saw plate, and this one is not. Am I going to have to bump up? Where is my, I have a little one. A little one. I don't one. know where the little Hello one went to. to. my little friend. Where is my little friend? A card scraper? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to cut those slots a little bigger. So I'm going to use my crosscut teeth. Those are just a hair larger. That will enlarge that groove. Just a little bit. So for one side, I'll use this. So the thing is you want the card scraper to be the same thickness as your saw plate. Uh, now, Rob Cosman actually sells a tool that does this, and uh, his card scraper is the exact same thickness as the set of the teeth, um, and works really, really well. Um, so what we're gonna do is switch the camera. Put the line in the coconut. And mix it all up. <laughs> You put this in here, and I'm going to start back. I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm going to go in about a quarter inch or so. Down to line, pull it out, move it back in a little farther, another eighth inch or so. Down to line, pull it out, and I'm going to go all the way back in now. This one's running smooth enough. And there, we're down to the line here, we're down to the line on the back. I'm going to pull it out and do the same thing on this one. And I'm not really pounding in this, I don't want to do too much work on it. I don't want to bend the card. <laughs> What's the funny? <laughs> Richard Buckman goes, I got confu confused and put the llama in the coconut. 
That uh, does not make a good drink. Trust me. I know. <laughs> I bet. I, I, wait. Let's see if I can say it. I bet I'll pack a punch. <laughs> no, it alpaca is a punch. That's what I was trying to say. Oh, I got you. <laughs> ah. There. So, two of these I've done out, and two of them I'm not going to, and I'll show you what the difference is. Hint, eh, not that much. So, just as before, hold fast, smash your finger, and then I'm going to grab my sharp half inch chisel that I just sharpened a little bit ago. What? You sharpened before a live? Yeah, I actually sharpened it during the live. You remember that? No, because I was paying attention to the chat. It was more exciting. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, flip over to this one. I'm going to put it in a little ways away from the line. And where did my mallet go? Seriously, I dude? I need that on my t-shirt. Where's my mallet? <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my mallet? <laughs> Honey, where's my mallet? Little ways away from the line. Good, good tap, tap. I love this white oak. It's good stuff. If you love it, you should marry it. Good idea. I'll rename you white oak. <laughs> okay, now we're down in the line. Pull it a little ways away. Try not to hit the camera. And we're just going to pop out those. And because I'm not going in from the other side, I can actually come in from the end here. I'll move the camera though, so that I'm not going to be bashing it. I'm actually going to do this just to make it a little easier for myself. And just being able to remove those makes it a little bit easier so you can see what's going on. And at this point, it's a lot of rinse and repeat. Chop in, pair out, chop in, pair out. It's a lot of what woodworking is, is just doing that same thing over and over again. That's the reason why we have apprentices. What are the kids doing? JJ's probably yelling at the computer screen again. <laughs> And this one here, the one I'm working now, that's the one I card scrapered in. And I'm getting really nice clean edges all the way back to the corners. The other one, I'm getting a lot of junk in the corners because the saw didn't get that far. But that's fine. I'm gonna keep on chopping. So in this one, I can just keep on going straight down like I did. But on this one, I've got those corners here. And so I'm going to have to start doing a little bit of work this way. Just going to tap in a little bit, tap in, tap in, and then do the same thing on this side. Nothing major. Just give it a little bit of work work. I'm getting down close to that line. At this point, I want to go a little slower. I don't want to blow out past that line. I have a nice crisp edge there. One of the nice things about half line dovetails is you can hide half of your joints. So if you have gaps in there, you can make them disappear. I'm going down to about a 30 second of an inch away from that line. You know, you should have like a quiz some night where like you hold up different joints and you're like, what's this one? <laughs> or a pole or a something or like the daily quiz on something. Okay. That would be kind of fun. So let's see where we're at here. I am really, really close to my line being in depth. I can't see this one because the camera's over here. Okay, I gotta come in and trim this way. And I'm not worrying about getting too close to it just yet. I'm just 
kind of getting the big junk. Staying away from those lines. Okay, I've gotten really close to it in almost all the definitions. I need to go a little farther back on this line. I need to go a little bit deeper there. Before we do this, I'm just going to go right into this line. Take my time and get it right where I want to. And I'm going to go straight down. And the student among you will realize, oh, you didn't get all the way that back into that corner. And I'm like, no. I can't do that with a standard chisel. I can get into all the other corners, but I can't get back into that one. And I'll show you how to fix that here in a moment. I'm just going right into that line. Cutting nice and vertical. Take the time. Have patience. It's half the skills out of all the woodworking. Okay. Now I'm going to grab one of my all-time favorite tools. This is a fishtail chisel or a dovetail chisel. And this one I made a while ago with a collaboration. And I love that live oak on there and the Damascus steel pleasant. But this one I can come in here and with that dovetail, that allow me to get right up tight into that corner all the way down. And that's, that's all this chisel does is that one little bit of movement. <laughs> Just moving that tiny little bit there. <laughs> that's all it does. And then from this end, I'm going to come right into that line and I'm going to tap it back just a little bit. Okay, let me know when you're at a point for questions. Let me just do this and then yeah. The camera's in the way, I gotta go bevel down here. And then, now, the problem is I want this to be perfectly level back in here. And so I could get out the, um, I could get out the router plane and do it out. And if I had a bunch of them to do, I probably would do that. Um, but I find the router plane is just going to take a little bit more time. So I'm going to move the hold fast a little farther away from this and get this closer to the edge of the table so I can actually get my um, chisel handle in there. Because the problem is before having it bevel up, the chisel handle is running into the bench. And so now I can come in here and I can just eyeball it and make it about level. And <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear it, but our kids are having some fun. <laughs> Arthur has the best laugh. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be perfect. You can even undercut it, undercut it a little bit. So at this point, I'm just going to do a little bit of detailing with my favorite little chisel and do all the last little bits on here. Anything sticking out, I chop it off. What question do you have while I'm doing this? Um, okay, first of all, they have a live idea. And where it's like a twitch stream and they get to pick what tool you use for each step. <laughs> like a choose your own journey woodworking style. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to their questions. That's scary. Uh, I think I'd have to tie that in with some sort of super chat. <laughs> $5 and you can pick from these horrible tools. $10 and I can really mess things up with these tools. $20 and I got to do it all with a hammer. <laughs> do not tempt them. That's all I'm going to say. Do not tempt them. Um, don't. Well, babe, the bad news is this project's going bad. The good news is we just bought a car. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a Mattel, but you know. <laughs> um... Woodworking with Logan, he joined us a little later. What's the angle of the tails? Looks like a one to eight. Uh, the angle is that. It's around a one to six, maybe a one to five. Uh, let me get my little jiggy thingy out here. Um, yeah, about a one to six, about. Let's see. This tail is almost dead on one to five, whereas this tail is a little bit off the one to five, I'd say a one to six, one to 5.5, um, something around that. I do not get picky with them. Um, usually the shorter the tails are, the more I want them to splay out and have a bigger angle. Um, if they're longer, then I'll put up with a, a shorter angle. Um, if I really want to show them off, I'll have a big splayed angle. If I don't want to, then I can keep them more narrow, um, but something like that. 
Let's actually give this thing a try. Um, a lot of people will give you very specific measurements for if it's a soft wood, you want this angle. If it's a hard wood, you want this angle. And yeah, it's okay to shoot for that. But I mean, really, the, the small mechanical oh. advantage you're going to get from one to the other is not going to make a bit of difference in 100 years of use. Um, it's one of those things where you can math it out as far as you want and you can come up with that this is technically better than this, but in actual function, the kid's going to bash it and it's going to look the same either way. Okay, here, I'll let you guys see the first test on this and see just how bad it is. And this is right off of the saw. Um, I haven't done anything other than the eyeball of it. So let's flip over to, ooh, um, hee. Let's, uh, let's do something different here. Let's put this down in here. Get it low enough so you can actually see it. There we go. Three. So um, this one, I have to remember which angle. Yeah, it's this one. So let me just make sure to flip it over. And it's actually pretty close, but this one's a little closer. So let's see if it slides in all the way. 50-50 chance. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 I like that. Okay, it's not going down all the way. I wonder if it's just because I probably have a little bit of junk in there. I don't know if you can see it here. Tiny little gap back in the corner there. There you go. So you can see this isn't seating down all the way. I flip it around. You can see how it's sticking up just about the same amount here. So that means these tails aren't going all the way down into the joint. So something is stopping them there. Um, so what could be is that the back of this, rather than that back being perfectly in line this way, the back of that is tipped up at an angle and that will cause them to sit on that back ledge or there could be some dirt in there or some junk. So let's uh, do this up and see what we got. Oh yeah, it's not. It's at a slight angle. So I've got a bit of a, a ramp in here. When I made that chisel cut, I didn't undercut it. Um, <laughs> what? How much like would the super chat to be to get James to buy a dog for the kids? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, the problem isn't the, uh, the dog. The problem is the kids. Well, uh, Arthur. Arthur has not incredible had incredible fear of dogs. Well, he had a really legitimate, bad <laughs> um, and it's going to take him years to get back over that. <sighs> Getting a dog would not fix it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm actually undercutting it just a little bit, making sure, and then I can use this to come in and get those little bits back in the corner that the other chisel can't get. I love this chisel. Really useless other than this application. It's like it's meant to do this or something. Now, if you really can't get all the way tight back into there, what you can do is rather than getting out stuff right tight in the corner, you can actually just take it off the back of the tail. So if I took this chisel and I lopped off the corner of this like that, now that will go all the way back down in there even if there's junk in that corner. Did I take that off the wrong side? I took it off the wrong side. <laughs> so I just took a chunk off of this on the side that'll be facing out. So now let's see what we got. Yay, that's happy. That is pleasant. Okay, nice there. Oh, it's not down all the way. That way. Oh, it's just at a slight angle. No, no, it's just down. So I, I apparently marked this line a little bit differently because this isn't all the way back in there, but it is all the way back up against this line. Actually, there's a little bit of gap there. I might have to do that one too. Let's give that a shot. Come on, break out. There you we go. You can see chisels go flying right now. Oh, yeah, you do that one too. Okay, so Are you, which camera do you think you're on? On, on this, oh, not on that one. Sorry. So, what I did 
was I made sure that this one last time, but now I need to actually come in and clean up. Yeah, I got a little bit in the bottom of this. So this just needs to be pared back a little bit right here. This one too. There is no such thing as perfection right off the saw. Unless you've been doing it for a while, and even then you still have to get a little lucky for it. Get that one in there a little bit more. And then of course the fishtail comes in. And get those last little bits in the corners. Okay, one more time. And the one. And the two. Hey, hey, hey. Where are the monkeys? There we go. That's looking even better. There we go. Nice. That's pleasant right there. And then on this side, let's actually bring it in focus so you can see it. There we go. There. Really nice. I like that one. Good tight joint. So there is a half blind dovetail. Uh, it's one of those things where I mean, the tail side is exactly the same except you're making the tail shorter. The, the pin side is just getting into that corner. And so you can use the card scraper trick to get all the way in there. And it works out really well. It means you don't have to do, don't have to do as much cleanup. But you saw the difference between the two. The other one is just got to use the chisel a little bit more when I get in there. Um, so. I'm kind of 50-50 on whether or not I do it with the, the card scraper or the chisel. Um, if I had uh, the Rob Cosman um, version, he has, his has actually has a card scraper rather than the card scraper. It actually has a handle on it and a brass back, so you're pounding on the, the brass back. Um, and it's a really cool system for it. If I had that, I'd probably use that every time. Um, using the card scraper, I generally lean towards using the chisel, but not always. Um, so it's kind of one of those things of, meh, whatever you like. So what questions do we have? Okay, hang on. You caught me mid-stroke. Hang on. Ah, I caught her mid-stroke. Oh. You're using blue tonight. I like it. Yes. Looks good. Matching James's planes. <laughs> um, Shane Mason wants to know, do you cut on the knife line or on the waist side of it? Um, I cut right on the knife. Well, okay. Let me, uh, let me demonstrate this a little bit. Um, that's one of the things about having a knife cut is it is the first cut of the saw. So it is infinitely small. Um, and so when you cut on, actually I'm going to grab a piece of paper and draw this out. It'll make it a little easier to see. So, pencil, there we go. So let's imagine we're going to take a cross section of the wood. wood and I need this, I need this. So I'm going to put this on here. Whoa, and here that's is the, fuzzy. Thank there, you. Is that better? There's the surface of our wood. So our board is... Let's say our board is this thick, okay? And I want to make a line on it right here. Well, when I come in with this knife and I mark in here, I'm going to mark a little V-shaped hole like that into the, into the wood. And so that's why I just marked all the way along there. So when I come to cut, theoretically, the kerf of my saw should be something like this, right there. Um, and so theoretically, this side of the tooth should line up exactly with that side of the line. Now, in theory, at that small of a size, you're going to get a little leeway one or the other. And I'm going to keep all of this board over here, and I'm going to get rid of all of this board over here. So that first mark with the knife is actually severing the fibers right here. And I'm keeping all of that, and I'm getting rid of all of that. So I put my saw right on the line like that. Now, um, the other thing you can do is make a knife wall. So you cut in like that with your marking gauge knife, and so you've made your mark there. I could then come in with a chisel, and pop out more material here and actually cut and make it rather than like that, I can bring it out to something more of an angle like this. And what that then does is allow me to bring in the, the saw and my saw would come in here. So that gives me a little bit more of a trench to actually hold the saw down in this space here. Um, so it makes it a little easier to keep it so the saw isn't wanting to bounce around. But once you get control of the saw and you know what you're doing, uh, the two of these are just about the exact same in difficulty. Um, this is what's referred to as a first class cut. This is a second class cut, and then a third class has no mark at all. You just cut the board. 
Um, yeah, that is actually a, a standard woodworking term. First class cut, second class cut, and third class cut. Um, so do I mark, do I cut on the line? The side of my plate is theoretically on the exact same plane as the mark that was cut. Um, so hope that answered your question. What's next? Um, let's see. Tiny Woodshop wanted to know, does that ruin your card scraper when you used it earlier? Um, no. Um, well, okay. Using a brass head, no. Um, this one I've used quite a few times with a big steel head, and I do a bit of mushrooming on the back here. Um, but does it ruin it? No, because next time I'm going to sharpen it, I'm just going to hit it with a file and clean, clean, and it's good to go. Um, so, no, it wasn't. Um, even with the... the, the Steel hammer, no. It means I'll have to do a little more dressing next time I sharpen it, but uh, it'll still work. The, the trick is finding one that's exactly the same thickness as your saw. I like my card scrapers to be ever so slightly thicker than my saw, and even this one was a little bit too thick for my carcass saw that I was using. Um, I'd probably have to go up to a tenon saw for this one to fit nicely, which I could have done, but I, it'd be better to have a slightly thinner plate. Um, that's one of the nice things with the Rob Cosman system is he actually has a, it's a brass back on there that protects it, so you're pounding on that rather than pounding directly on the card scraper. Is that uh, Super Chat? Oh, two of them. What do we got? So, Troy J says, for whichever fund needs funding. <laughs> Sarah's Cocoa Fund, always. <laughs> the coffee fund is fully funded at the moment. The coffee fund does not need to be funded anymore. <laughs> you complained about nail polish smell. I am not a fan of coffee smell. Anyways. Yeah, she doesn't like the smell of coffee. What can I say except... You're welcome. Aaron Fenn says, sorry I'm late. really wanted to make it today. Oh, thanks, Aaron. Glad you could make it. So what are the jokes? I'm getting there. Tell I was joke, not ready. <laughs> hey, I got to record the... Uh, for those of you who don't know, I put out a weekly short on Monday. Um, it's just dad jokes. Um, and I've got to record that one tomorrow. So I've got a few good ones coming for it. <laughs> Do you have a question while you're looking? Um, let's see. Yes. Shane Mason wants to know, once you do all this and you still have gaps, how to figure out where you went wrong? Um, most of the time, the biggest problem is if you're trying to saw and hit the saw mark, um, it all comes down to your, your saw skill. The, the biggest problem most people have is that they stay away from the line and then they'll come back with a chisel and back up to the line. And chiseling will usually be what causes more problems than anything other, than anything else. And so the, the trick is, if you think you have a problem in one spot, take off a little with the chisel, or better yet, a file if you can, because the file takes off even less, and then put it back together. If you still have the exact same problems in the exact same place, then that wasn't where you wanted to take something off. Find a different spot. Um, if you put it back together and it's a little bit better, that means take off a little bit more in that spot. Um, but just taking off a good chunk with the chisel and then putting it back together and hoping it's good, that will cause you more gaps than anything else is, is the chisel. So it's usually best to hit that line dead on with a saw and be golden. Um, and that's usually what I, what I try to do, but that takes a lot of skill and practice and doing it over and over again. Um, figuring out where is the problem, um, yeah, that's one of those that is, um, is, is, is very difficult. Um, and so usually the goal is take off as little as possible to see if that was the right spot. And if it didn't change, that was not the right spot, do something else. Um, also, if the two of them go together halfway, then whatever wood is touching at that halfway point, do not touch, do not take off any material there. At that point, it's okay. The problem is below that. Only take off the material below that. Um, and so that's, it's, that's very important. Another one, well thank you. Yes, yeah, sm Smuggle Me Zyra says, love that thumbnail. And by the <laughs> way, you left it how to cut houndstooth. I did? Yeah. Ah! Uh -huh. Yes, no, half blind dovetails. <laughs> you got a mom joke? Um, hang on. <laughs> Brace yourselves, folks. Shut up. <laughs> She's digging for a doozy here. Uh, you know, they got me at the end. I was like, it's 8.50. I'm good. I'm scot-free. No. <laughs> oh, there another question away here? Um, I can smell the smoke. Shut up. 
A lot of these I've said before is the problem. Where's your dad joke book? Uh, I don't know where I put it. I think it's over here. I'm not, because I, I want to find one that they don't know, and I'll, y'all know these. There you go. <laughs> I've got a collection of dad joke books that I, that I dig through. <laughs> well, do you have a question while they're hunting? All right, I got one. What do you call fake potatoes? What? Imitators. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> you can't smell the fingers. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> y'all, I would love, y'all should just put your jokes. Do you, do you have a question? Or uh, no, I have no oh, more have no questions. questions. Oh, okay. Then we're just doing the dead joke. Um, so next week is the 8th. Um, and I'm thinking I might do a full blind dovetail. Um, we'll see. That would be um, kind of fun. I like full blind. Um, I do, well, I don't like them for joinery. I do like them for thinking about it. The other one I'm thinking about doing is the splayed dovetail. So not in any degrees, but something else. Um, so if you have a preference between those two, let me know and uh, we'll be... I'm having more fun with that because I like doing the, the series of, of dovetails here. Um, I was actually talking with a friend of mine who's out in California, um, and he is thinking about uh, having me come out to teach a, uh, a class out there um, one or two days on types of dovetails. So if you want to do a one on one, you're in California, um, stay tuned. Wait, what? You want? I want to go to California. Well, maybe you'll come with me. What you got? Okay, not a bad mom joke. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> this one's. Bad. What? Where do sheep go on vacation? What? The Bahamas. <laughs> Your grandparents would like that one. <laughs> <laughs> they they used to raise okay. sheep. Okay. Okay. Last one, and then I think I've caught up. Where do mice park their boats? What? At the Hickory Dickory Dock. Okay, no yes, more, babe. guys. It's 857. <laughs> I am not prepared. Full blind, full blind. Uh, yeah, I think it's Northern California. I think you said just outside of San Francisco. Um, San Fran. It, yeah, it's, it's really early stages. I have no idea when. I have no idea if. Um, but he invited me out for it, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I should do a dad joke calendar. That'd be a fun one. What? Dad damn it! <laughs> Way off topic, but I need a Christmas list of my significant other and need Rex. I would like a leather apron and apron plain squirrel tail question mark. What would you suggest? Five hundred dollar budget for both. Um I mean, you know, for for five hundred dollars, um well okay. Apron, my favorite currently is the one from Cat's Moses. I, I love it, really well thought through, especially if a big shop where you're walking around, it's got all the bells and whistles so you can fit things into it. It even has a really nice pocket for the, the apron, for the plane. Um, yeah, I mean, for that budget, I mean, you can get just about anything. Um, I really like the, uh, um, the rabbited block plane from Lee Nielsen. Um, I really like the, the one from Veritas. Both of those are what I would consider to be top-notch, really cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't go squirrel tail. I don't like that small. Um, it depends on your hand size. I mean, anything smaller than the nine and a half, um, you're, you're really running into issues. Um, I don't know what you're but I wouldn't want to get a brass one for a apron, apron. That'd be really heavy. Yeah. Your small hands like Sarah. Baby hands. Yeah. Then you get the, uh, the little one from, uh, um, Bridge City. <laughs> it's like baby planes do 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 okay <sighs> hang on you had one less yeah and i do um for those of you wanting uh christmas gifts the um black friday um no excuse me thursday um thanksgiving i always put out a video on uh christmas gifts for the woodworker and so the whole idea for that is um, send this to your significant other um, to give them ideas for it. So if you have things you want me to include this year, let me know. Um, but it is a, uh, a wish list for the woodworker in your life. Um, so that usually comes out Thursday morning. That's 
bad. Or Thanksgiving morning. What? Do you want me to read the bad one? Sure. Do you know the difference between England and a tea bag? England and a tea bag. What? A tea bag could stay in the cup longer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually watch soccer. I have nothing against England. It's a lovely place to visit. Scottish people will enjoy that one. <laughs> well, they are the ones who changed the game. Anyways. Cool. Well, on that note, um, let me know if you want me to do a full blind or to do um, the ankle dovetail. And uh, Totally digress at the end. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll do it for now. And until next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.